haven't noticed by now, you probably will soon. A new trend in the way black women are styling their hair. One topic has made regular and frequent appearances in the subject line of viewer emails. My hair. A viewer who wasn't particularly fond of her style wrote this on the station's Facebook page. The black lady that does the news is a very nice lady. The only thing is she needs to wear a wig or grow some more hair. Blonde hair. Something that just clicked, maybe with our eyes. Blue eyes. Professional. Professional. Really good looking. Smiling all the time. Great personality, great smile. And how's her hair? Natural. Historically, Afros and natural hair is seen as revolutionary. You think Angela Davis right off the back, and you, you're thinking, you know, yeah. pro black, you know, that must mean that, you know, we're about to have some rebellion. Yeah. It, and, <laughs> right. And so I wonder why it's like that. You know, why professionally is straight perm hair the preferred look? Well, because white is the majority, and mm -hmm. white people have straight hair. In the United States, we have been the antithesis of beauty and that was the that was created in order to develop an inferiority complex that was required to enable slavery to work so oprah do you all remember when she had to go natural when she first started in the industry mm -hmm. they told her basically her hair was too big she was rocking the afro for a while so and then she, so she had to get relaxed right she had to get a relax and mm -hmm. so she shows us her journey throughout this whole thing i was bald for a period of time um as an anchor woman in Baltimore. I was 22 years old. I had thick hair and it messed up the chroma key, which is that blue wall they put behind it. And the news director came to me one day and said, your hair is too thick and you need a complete makeover. And they sent me to this shishi poo poo salon in New York. And so I said, I'm thinking I'm being really cool. I go, you all do black hair here. And the guy says, we madame, we do black hair. We do red hair, we do your hair. And puts a French perm on my black hair. He leaves the perm on so long that it's literally, I'm thinking it's burning through my cerebral cortex. <laughs> they put all these great conditioners on there, and for the, as long as the conditioners were in my hair and I didn't wash it, the hair held in my head. Sure. But as soon as I washed it, it's all not. of the hair came out. <laughs> then I did what, you know, balding men do. You try to hold on to the four hairs you had. <laughs> and look at all the wet stuff. Dipping you. Finally, someone came up to me and said, you don't have no hair. Is that a problem that I mean, we have to, in, midst, in the midst of trying to find a job and everything else, we have to think about, hmm, I wonder how, how I need to wear my hair before I go into this interview. Is this going to make me not get the job? Is that a, is that a real, it you know? Is, because is. I have every intention of when I'm actually searching for a job and like going out to interviews at different stations, I'm going to have long weave and I'm going to try and look as much as possible and relate to them so I can get the job. That's just... That's yeah. how it but, is. But I think that argument, it, it's changing now. Because even when you talk to our professors, they're letting us know they're looking for girls with natural hair. So but even that starting argument, to look. Yeah, they're start, but I'm saying, though, like you're saying, like you, if you go there with natural hair, you think they won't get you. But now it's kind of like the thing. It's all like if I'm going to have, it's like when you even watch commercials now with black women, you notice how they're all natural. It's like now if I'm going to look for a black woman, I want a black woman. It's no, almost like but that's I, and that still with goes with if you're confident with it. Right. Because right. if you're no, not, it'll be that's obvious a good point, that this because girl does not That's know. a great point in a great Great transition into Rochelle Ritchie. You know, um, in 2011, she was a reporter for WPTV in West Palm Beach, Florida, and she decided to take that big step out and she went natural. And she logged her journey, made it into a package, put it out there for everyone to see. And this is where the story hits home for me. When I started in TV, I was told I needed to get extensions. So I did and began to almost immediately move up the TV ladder. And for six years, I faithfully wore extensions and wigs. But like these women, I was tired of the damage being done to my real hair. It grew but was weak from all of the pulling of the extensions, and I began to lose it. So after years of manipulation, I took the brave step of going natural. I can't believe it. I'm gonna cut my hair off. Oh, God. 
How much are we gonna have to cut? But I did it, and it's a big change for the women who take this path. Now, Melissa Harris Perry, um, host for MSNBC, um, did a Black Hair 101 segment mm -hmm. where she basically broke it down for everyone what all black hair entails. Sew-ins, natural hair, why we can't get in pools after we've gotten a perm. That's true. She, she broke it all the way down. And I personally think that's, that's the best start. I think it's informing people. I, a lot of times people don't want to associate with their real selves, with their natural, because maybe they don't know the history behind it. Maybe they don't realize, you know, this is something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. You know, your, our ancestors wore their hair like this because this is what they had, you know, and, and they embraced it and loved it. So I think that the first step would be informing and people becoming more knowledgeable about what all black hair entails. And she was even talking about the language that was used when they talked about black hair growing up and that like your mom would call you over and be, let me let me work on that kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, Ooh, the yes, nappy the kitchen. and stuff like that. <laughs> Natural hair means that a hair has not been treated with any chemical relaxers. An afro, that small or voluminous halo of highly textured hair that floats above some black women's scalps, does not mean that she's about to set off the revolution. There is nothing dreadful about dreadlocks. They're also not a sign that someone smells, sells or smokes marijuana. And by the way, they're locks, not dreads. And a black woman who chemically straightens her hair is not trying to be white. When in doubt, of course, the best course of action is to understand a black woman by what's in her head, not what's on it. You know, it, it definitely, it comes down to people like Melissa Harris Perry. No one is going to be proud of themselves until they see people in their industry rocking the natural hair. You know, that's why I think it's great that she rocks her, you know, her, her braids or whatever, because it's a, mm -hmm. it's a hairstyle that, you know, we've been wearing since we were little girls. You know what I mean? So until you have someone who takes a stand and is like, you know what, I'm going to wear my hair the way I want to, and if you don't like it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's, it's not going to happen until someone does that. Yes. And if people just keep sitting, you know, listen, if people set back in the 60s, you know, we would be right here at all. You know what That's I mean? True. So it, someone has to take a stand and regardless of how you feel about it, it's important for little black girls to see black women being black women. Is this dynamic going to change? Is this going to still even be a discussion 10 I years from now? I think we'll see many more black women with their natural, natural hair, hair in the future. I, I, I think it, I agree. once they see all the cute styles they can do with it and how and the nice it looks, exactly. Mm -hmm. they, they, especially how they know that you can still straighten your natural hair and just take care of it. I feel like it'll shift into black women soon being proud to rock their natural hair. And Young people have come in and they've just made society change in a number of ways when it comes to the acceptance of, an, of a lot of things. It could be hair, it could be image, it could be personality, um, because now it's about performance and it's about uh, qual qualifications and the quality of your work. And I think once we have taken ownership of our image and our look and it has not become a problem for ourselves, then it's not necessarily, we take the power away from other people to make it, you know, a problem. What do you all do with your hair? What's your daily regimen when you wake up in the morning, you know, what do you do? I know when I had my perm, before I started this, my transitioning, um, when I had a perm, it was as simple as wrapping it, waking up, unwrapping it. If it's flat, put some heat on it, spruce it up a little bit, spray some, you know, sheen on it and out the door. Now that, you know, I've had these twists for a while, it's just really Love wake it. up, mm -hmm. go. I need That's to get it. Some twists in my you hair. know, it's 10 minutes tops, if that. So what do you all do every morning? Um, it, well, I'm just now really learning the type of styles that work mm -hmm. for my hair, but I usually basically rock a wash and go, and I'll get in the shower, I'll, you know, I'll do my thing, and I'll put some conditioner in my hair, I'll comb it out, and it's really easy. It's not, it probably looks like, oh my gosh, she probably has a hell of a time you know, combing her hair, but it's really easy once you're in the shower, you just put some conditioner mm -hmm. in it. Comb it out, rinse it out, get in there, put in some leave-in, maybe some shea moisture or whatever, a little bit of like an oil, like a sealant, and I just, and I keep it moving. I just unwrap it, <laughs> <laughs> and if it's flat, I might bump a little curl in there, and yeah, it's called the day, and we're going, we're good. Well, when I do wear my natural hair, I'm like an old lady. I put <laughs> rollers in it at mm -hmm. night so that I don't have to put that much heat on it when I wake up, so I'll just like wrap it around the front area where I want my bang, and set the back end roller so I can have some curls when I come out, wake up, take my bonnet off and comb it out with a big tooth comb and I'm good. But now I just wake up because <laughs> it's already curled and everything and it stays like, stays like this for a while. So I can go a week without really putting heat in it.
I'm scared. I, I think also, you know, when I said earlier, you know, knowledge is the whole thing. And just, I think discussions like this, like we just had simple ones where we talk about where we think this stuff comes from, where we think it's headed, is, you know, a start to everyone being more knowledgeable and us embracing our culture and loving our hair, loving the skin we're in. And I think Tanya said it best, you know, it's about, it's about the culture. You just have to be comfortable with yourself. You have to be confident whatever you're doing, whether you're natural, whether you're permed hair. So I think this is a great discussion and thank you, ladies. 97 dreadlocks all gone I looked in the mirror for the first time and saw that Hey, hey I am not my hair I am not this skin I am not your expectations, no, no